Hey, what's going on? This is Tim Freitas with the Garden of English. I've got two really good friends here because I decided to spend my weekends in Cincinnati or in Northern Kentucky. Where are we? Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> Northern, Kentucky. Nor Northern Kentucky. But um, I decided to take this time to be able to talk to Brandon here to clarify some misconceptions that we see on the Facebook site consistently about line of reasoning. So Brandon, I'm just going to ask that you give us a little history of where it came from. Uh, tell us how you would actually address it in your classroom. Then we're going to ask Lauren to just give us a little snippet of what she would do in her classroom. I'll finish it up with me, and we'll be done for today. Sure. So, um, uh, as we all know, students, if you've been a reader, if you've not been a reader, students have always struggled to uh, introduce evidence into what they're writing uh, and then explain that evidence. Uh, some of us have called that commentary. Some of it call us explanation, different things. Uh, so we started working in that word commentary that over the past several years I think people have gotten familiar with. Um, but we really started looking and saying, well, what is it about effective commentary? And the more we looked at, at essays uh, that were doing well, and I don't mean doing well as in scoring at the top, I mean essays that were, were, were patent, right? Uh, we noticed that there was a, a line that you could follow through those essays. It's a line of reasoning. Um, and you could see that the student establishes something in their thesis, and then in the next paragraph they establish some aspect of that, and then they build upon that in the next paragraph, and so on, leading down to the logical conclusion of their essay. Whether they were analyzing something, whether they were writing their own arguments, whether they were synthesizing and writing their own arguments, we saw that. And so we had to articulate that and think about it. And really the best way to put it is the line of reasoning is the line of thinking that brings you to the conclusion of your essay. Um, and so many times, I think, you know, the way I like to put this with my college students and with my high school students, is I know you meant to say something. Or you'll say, remember when you come to me and you say, I meant to say this? Well, you didn't say it. Yeah. All right? It's here. It just didn't make it to here. And, you know, I think about Donald Murray saying, you know, thinking is writing on paper. Wrong. Writing is thinking on paper. <laughs> I, I misquoted him. And, um, and that's so true, but I'm not in your head. I need to see all that writing on the paper. Uh, and so one of the ways we can think about it is, in the way I introduce it, is just the simple syllogisms. Um, Aristotle is a man, all men are mortal, therefore Aristotle is mortal. And we'll introduce that, I might not use Aristotle, as the idea that, yeah, this is proven, this is proven, therefore I've got a conclusion. And then look at that, how that works in a paragraph by itself. We really make those paragraphs sharp. And then we look at multiple paragraphs and how this paragraph is proven and this next paragraph is proven, which leads me to the next one. And then we start cutting up paragraphs. Can I move these paragraphs around? And if I can, there might not be a line of reason. This paragraph by itself might make sense. This paragraph by itself might make sense. But the paragraphs together don't really follow a line of reasoning through the essay. So that's ways I approach it. I've also done that with uh, other people's writing, writing or analyzing cutting it up and looking at how those paragraphs relate to each other. Because I like to think about paragraphs and sentences as segments of thought. Now I know we've talked to Lauren, and Lauren was talking about the way she uses, I think, Martin Luther King to yeah. do this. Do you want to spin that? Because it was really good. Uh, it was really good, but um, same with what Brandon said. I do start by talking about the idea of syllogisms, and you don't need to use that word. It's not a word they necessarily need to have in, in their yeah, vernacular or anything like that. Um, but just for your math kids, you know, was that the transitive property? I said, you know, if A equals B and B equals C, and so on and so forth. And I find that the kids who need something very concrete, um, even though it's a pretty deeply philosophical concept, I think really seem to gravitate to it and get it. And then as we start with the basic structure, then we go in and fill in where the added details are to really kind of frame that syllogism. And I find that starting with something very concrete like that actually helps my kids. Um, I cut things up all the time. We do that um, all the time. The other thing is a strategy that is a little bit off of line of reasoning. But when you were talking about that our kids need to say something, but they don't, Usually it's because they have evidence, but their entire commentary is incomplete, it just stops. And one of the, I, I had to keep thinking, why does that keep happening? And we talk about rhetorical analysis, and then we'll say, analyze your evidence, or this is incomplete. So one of the things that I do too is I go back to analysis by definition is breaking up something into its parts. So every claim, every argument, whatever, it starts with that question, and so I make them go back and break up the parts. Is it a cause and effect? Is it... Um, an impact of something. What are you trying to answer? And they have to address all of those parts to have a cohesive argument. Um, for some of my struggling kids, that seems to help a lot. 
too. And one of the things I'd like to point out with what Lauren just talked about is, she's, this is English, essentially English 101, or, or first semester composition for, for a college student, and uh, we're not recreating the writing courses that we took as English majors. Uh, we're really trying to think about foundational thinking and writing. Uh, and, and I think Lauren said breaking it down into it, it, its basic chunks is really key uh, so that students can see how those things fit together. Excellent. Uh, you know, just for me, in relation to the line of reasoning, what I typically like to do is I like to take the overarching purpose of a rhetorical analysis and then I'll write my own analysis for kids uh, where I might actually convey the effect of something, but I don't tie it to the overarching purpose of the speaker and I'll have the kids read a rhetorical analysis paragraph and I will make one not connect to the overarching purpose. It's just for a, a small effect of something. And I'll ask the kids, what, par what paragraph does it fit? It's like in Sesame Street, you know? A couple of these things are kind of the same, one of them's different. One of these things is not like the other. That's right, one of these yeah. things is not like the other, that's the one. And then um, they'll be able to pick it out. And I'll ask them, well, why is that the case? Why is this one different? And almost every time they'll say, because you might have told me that it's building so-and-so's authority to go do something, but that doesn't connect to why the people should then act nonviolently, or why the people should then be willing to go to war, or something along those lines. Well, it might connect up here, but the student hasn't put right. it in the paper. Right, right, right. and that's, that's when we move to revision for their work, gotcha. when they can identify a small effect of something, but not connect it to the overall purpose, even though they will know it. And that's how we really try to uh, move from even three commentary to four point commentary on that kind of chart there, so. Uh, anyway, um, impromptu conversation, so take it or leave it, uh, but uh, as always, uh, thanks for visiting. Um, by the way, we're still trying to give away one of these t-shirts, and I haven't hit 200 subscribers yet, so once I hit that, we'll give it away. So have a good one, folks.